Welcome back to another episode of Low Spec Labs. Before we get started, I would like to say thank you for hitting the like button. Thank you for commenting and thank you for subscribing. If you're new to the channel and you haven't subscribed yet, please hit the subscribe button. I hope you enjoy the content. Let's go ahead and get started. We are in chapter 13. Can you believe it? We've been going about one chapter a week and it's been about 13 weeks. We started in January and it is now March, the end of March, approaching April. 12 weeks pass by in the blink of an eye. Time flies when you're having fun. Either to my right or to my bottom, depending on how you're viewing this, you're gonna see some log outputs. Most services on Linux servers output log files. And if your service doesn't output log files, it is not a very good service. If you're not using logging, it becomes very difficult to troubleshoot issues on Linux servers. Logs will make your life so much easier. Generally speaking, there are three ways applications write to log files on Linux servers. The first is systemd journal d. Basically, systemd comes with a logging subservice included, and the application will use that logging subservice to write log files. The second is direct write. So basically, the application directly writes to one of several log files. So something like var log messages, or something like var log syslog, or maybe even just its own log file inside of the var log folder. And the third is r syslog d. So basically, the log service will write to a log file and then forward that to a remote server or just write the log files to a temporary location and then forward that to a more centralized location that you can use to like search or maybe get some meta analysis of what your servers are doing. In the next couple of videos, we'll dive deeper into system D journal D. We're also going to dive deeper into the actual log file locations. And then we're going to log into our syslog D and set that up to manage log files and rotate them and maybe even forward them out to a remote server. This is going to be a fun chapter, boys. Go ahead and tighten your seat belts. This is going to be a wild ride. The first logging service we're going to talk about is System D Journal D. System D Journal D tracks log events from boot, different services, and from the kernel. And then it writes these log events into a binary file called journal. You can query this binary file using a command called journal CTL. Let's uh, talk about that a bit more and try it out. Something to keep in mind is that the messages stored in journal CTL are not saved between reboots, or at least not initially. To get around this issue, the messages in journal are forwarded to our syslog D, which is another log management service. To my right, or to my bottom, I have an output for var log messages. So if we were to close this out, and then we were to do journal CTL, you see I have some output here. And what this output shows is the various messages that I have on my system. Hello, and welcome back to another episode of Low Spec Labs. It's been a while since we talked a whole 24 to 48 hours, depending on when I released this video. Since then, I hate to admit this, I've missed you. Have you missed me? I hope you share similar sentiments. If not, that's okay. At least you enjoy the content. Before we get started, I would like to say thank you to everybody who has hit the like button. Thank you to everybody who has commented and thank you to everybody who has already subscribed. If you're new to the channel and you would like to keep up with whatever shenanigans I've got going on, go ahead and hit the subscribe button and we'll keep in touch. Otherwise, I hope you have a great day. Let's get started. When talking about log files, there are generally two things you need to know how to do with them. The first is to know where they're located. The second is to know how to read them. Let's talk about log file locations real quick. On Linux servers, most logs are going to be kept in var log, and they're either going to be kept directly inside of the var log directory as a log file, or they're going to be kept inside of another directory inside of var log. When I run a ls of var log, you'll see we actually have a bunch of different options in the output here. Let's go through a couple of them. The first is boot.log, which keeps information about our files and how they're booted. The second is a folder. You can see right here, this is a crony folder. 
Crony is a timekeeping service and inside of the var log folder there is another folder we can tell this is a folder because of the directory flag right here and inside of that crony folder are going to be log files on top of knowing where logs are kept there are some common log files you should know about the first is var log messages so if you were to do a tail dash f of var log messages we'll see the output of var log messages and you'll see we're getting some cursor error messages from our virtual cursor on this virtual machine Another kernel message you should know about is var log secure. Var log secure contains messages about login. So whenever you attempt to log in and that succeeds or fails, it is logged in var log secure. Another one is var log boot.log. So if we were to do tail dash f var log boot.log, it doesn't output anything because that's empty, but generally, that contains information about our boot process. Another log file is var log audit audit.log, which contains stuff about security context. So if you had SE Linux enabled or if you were doing SSH, you would see that information inside of var log auth auth.log. You would see that information in var log audit audit.log. Now that we know where the common log files are, we also need to know how to read them. Let's look through a log file as an example. A good example for this is gonna be var log messages. If you're troubleshooting Linux servers, you're gonna be reading through that a lot. So if we were to do tail dash n 10, and then we were to do var log messages, and what we just did is tow tail to print out the last 10 lines of var log message, and it did. And we can now break down the output of those messages. So let's go through it line by line. The first part of the log message you should understand is the date and time the log event occurred. So in our case, it's April 3rd at 7.55.52. The second part of the log message is the host that it occurred on. Remember, you can forward log messages to other servers. So having a host name associated with the log message is very important to know which server the log message applies to. As you can see, LSL2, which is this current server. The third part of the message is the name of the service or the process ID. So if it doesn't have a name for the service, it'll just include a process ID, but otherwise it'll include both. So we can know what service generated that message. And last of all, there's the actual content of the message. So this is telling us a uh, hardware cursor failed and it's giving us like an error. And I've run into this before. It's basically a driver issue with the virtual cursor for this virtual machine. It's not worth fixing because I'm just using this for a test lab. But if you had some more serious issues, you definitely want to use these outputs to figure out what's going on with your host. When troubleshooting Linux issues, it's useful to know how to view live logs. So if we had live log messages we want to look at, how would we view them? That's easy enough. We've kind of already done this. We'll see if some of you guys uh, can guess it before we actually do it. I'm going to pause the video right here. All right, so how do you view log messages? You would do tail dash f flower var log messages. And remember dash f is a continuous update of the tail command. And as you can see, as I move my mouse around, those messages update and they update. And then as soon as I stop, they stop updating, right? Earlier I mentioned journal CTO. Let's dive deeper into journal CTL and talk about it a little bit more. Journal CTL is the command line utility for the system D journal D service. So effectively system D journal D writes logs in binary format to a file and journal CTL is the tool we use to view and manage those logs. Let's talk about that subject a bit more. So to manage the system D journal D service, we use the journal CTL command. And when we just type that command into our command line, it gives us the output. We've used this before. And as you can see, it's showing us those hardware cursor errors we had earlier. How do we actually use the journal CTL command? There are some basic flags we need to know. Let's talk about those. The first flag you need to know is journal CTL dash F. What that basically does is show the most recent updates to journal CTL. 
So remember, we have an issue of our mouse cursor, and as I move the mouse cursor, Journal CTL automatically gets updated. We can also use Journal CTL to show our boot log. To do that, we do Journal CTL dash B. And if we had entries for boot inside of our log file, it would show those. Unfortunately, we currently do not, so it's not showing them. What if we wanted a journal output that gave us a little bit more info? To do that, we'll do journal CTL dash X. And as you can see, when we go through the journal this time, we have more info. This doesn't apply to every single entry in the journal, just logs or applications that are set up to provide more info. But once we hit the dash X flag, you can see not only do we see the log, we can see what wrote the log, how to get some support for it, the job ID, different stuff like that. Let's say we wanted to filter log messages to only view log messages from a particular unit. So for instance, we could do journal CTL dash U. So we were to do journal CTL dash U SSHD. We only get logs from SSHD output to our system. This is very useful for troubleshooting different services. Let's say we only wanted a specific type of log messages. Well, we could use journal CTL dash P. To do that, we'll do journal CTL dash P and then it requires an argument. We'll go one and then we can do P2. As you can see, as we change the priority, the type of messages we're getting from the system changes. We could do journal CTL dash P3. And again, priority is basically the severity level of the message. Now that we know some basic journal CTL flags, let's run through lab 13 dash two. First, they want us to issue the journal CTL command and view its output. We've already done this a couple times, so that should be very familiar to you guys. Then they want us to run a journal CTL dash dash no pager, or, or this command right here. What that does is it prints out journal CTL command without a pager support. So basically we can't automatically, you know, page through that file like we would with the less command. They then want us to run a journal CTL dash F. So we only see the newest outputs of journal CTL like so. They then want us to run through journal CTL one more time and actually learn how to use the interactive text UI. So to do that, we do journal CTL and then they want us to hit the space bar twice. What the space bar does, it's let us scroll. You can also use the page up and page down keys on your keyboard to scroll through journal CTL. If you wanted to go to the end of the journal, you could hit end. And if you wanted to go back to the beginning of the journal, you could hit home and it would take you back to the start. What if we just wanted to view the last couple lines of a journal? To do that, we could do journal CTL dash N five. And as you can see, it just prints out the last five lines of the journal. What if we only wanted to see the errors out of our journal? To do that, we will do journal CTL dash P error. As you can see, we now only see the error from the journal. What if we wanted to only see errors from a specific time period? Do that, we'll do journal CTL dash dash since, and then we can enter a day in the year, 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 month, month, day, day format. So that would be 202403, and then let's do 31. So everything since a couple days ago. And as you can see, it prints out all the journals and then we can scroll through the past couple days worth of logs. You can combine all of those options to get an even more specific journal. So let's say we wanted to do journal CTL dash P error dash dash since, and then we can do something like yesterday. And as you can see, we have no errors since yesterday. What if we wanted to see all the options that got printed out to journal when we ran the journal CTL command? To do that, we would do journal CTL dash O for both. As you can see, it prints out our journal CTL, but it gives us a much more informative journal. We get to see all the information related to that. We get to see the boot time, audit time, session ID. So the only way do we see the log, we basically get to see when the log was written and a bunch of metadata about that log as well. Last but not least, what if we wanted to see Last of all, what if we wanted to see messages related to the kernel? Well, we could do journal CTL dash dash D message. And as you can see, we get to see all the kernel related messages inside of our journal. Something I mentioned earlier was that journal CTL 
writes its logs in binary to a file. Well, it doesn't save that file. That file actually gets deleted upon reboot of the system. So how does journal CTL manage to save logs between reboots? It uses another service. That service is called rsyslogd. That is worth a video all on its own. But until then, I will show you how to configure journal CTL to rotate its logs. That is a separate configuration file from the rsyslogd config file. So, how do you manage journal CTL's logging retention? It's pretty straightforward. There is a config file for that. And that's one of the reasons I like Linux. That file is etsy systemd journald.com. And inside of etsy systemd journald.com, there's only about four configuration settings you'll need to know. Let's go over them real quick. To manage etsy systemd journald.com, I am using the nano utility. Let's talk about the different options you'll need to know. The first option you will need to know is storage equals auto. What does this setting do? Basically, it writes the journal to disk as long as the directory for a log a journal exists. The next is storage equals volatile. The next is storage equals volatile. What that does is stores the log file in run log journal. So basically, it stores the log file to a temporary location that gets wiped every time the system is rebooted. The third option is storage equals persistent. So again, this stores the log files in var log journal, but if var log journal doesn't exist, storage equal persistent will create that folder for you. And the last option is storage equals none. And basically that means you're not storing the journal anywhere. So good luck with that. Let's practice creating persistent storage for our log files. First, we make a var log journal. So to do that, we do a make dir var log journal. Then we change the ownership on that file. So to do that, we do change own. We want to change the ownership to root. We want to change the group ownership to system d journal. Then we want to change the file var log journal. Then we want to set ownership. So the ownership on that is 2755, right? And then we want to set that on var log journal. And then we can do an ls that's ALH to just to see what it did to that. And then when we do that, we'll see we now have a folder called var log journal that is owned by system D journal. Or we could do var log and then grep journal. As you can see, we have system D journal right there. There's a journal folder. It's owned by system D journal and the user root. Then after that, we simply have to restart system CTL. So we do system CTL restart, and then we restart system D journal flush, right? And now when we ls var log journal, you'll see we now have a file there. And basically the system is now saving our journal to that file. Let's go ahead and get started here. We last left off mentioning our syslog D. What exactly is our syslog D? Our syslog D is a log rotation utility. So basically it keeps tracks of all system logs and then it rotates those log files out either locally or remotely. So you can configure our syslog D to keep logs and rotate them out every week, every month, every year. You can also set it up to keep log locally and then forward them to a remote server. Our syslog D is a very powerful tool. I even use it in my home lab to do centralized logging and searching. Of course, I put another application like gray log on top of it first, but it is very useful to troubleshoot many different servers at once. The logic behind our syslog D is pretty straightforward. You should see it to my left or on the bottom, depending on how I cut this up. But basically it runs like this. The service starts, it looks for the specific time it's supposed to rotate. If it's that time, it rotates. If not, it doesn't rotate. After that, it checks if the log file exists if it does exist, it copies the log file 
and rotates. If it doesn't exist, it's not time to rotate. Like almost every other service on Linux, our syslog D can be managed by editing its configuration file. Where is the configuration file for our syslog D? Our syslog D can be managed by editing etsy slash rsyslogd.conf. Pretty straightforward, but wait, there's more. Not only is there a configuration file, there is also a folder that rsyslogd monitors for configuration changes as well. That folder is called etsy rsyslog.d. So we just went through what rsyslog is, and we just went through where the configurations are kept and actually configuring the utility to our right or to the bottom depending on how you view this you'll see that we have an etsy rsys log config file open let's walk through this config file and explain what the different options inside of it are the first part of your rsys log the conf file is your module section so this portion right here and underneath modules you'll see module and then you list the module you want enabled so because our syslog d is module you can come in here and turn off different features you don't want right so for instance we have local logging so you would want to turn that off if you wanted to read kernel messages you'd have to enable that if you wanted to read mark messages you'd have to enable that even if you wanted to enable log forwarding you'd have to enable that inside of this module setting here the next portion is the global directives portion what does global correctives do well it sets the default for our log files so for instance it tells us where we're going to keep log files by default it also tells us the time format we would want to use so if you wanted to change the way your log files were time stamped you would come in here and you would change this under global directives in order for you to change the format of the date and time in your logs last but not least are the rules section of the config file and what the rules section of the config file does is define what messages we're going to log so for instance we're going to log info mail privileges and cron messages and then it also tells us where we're going to log those messages in our case we're going to log those messages to far log messages same thing here we can see who tries to gain elevated access and it logs those logs or it logs that information to var log secure. So when defining what type of messages to log underneath the rules sections, you need to understand what exactly you're typing in. So let's dive into these log configuration settings real quick. So there are three parts you'll wanna understand when it comes to defining your log. The first is the facility, which is this portion right here before the dot. The second is the priority, which is the type of log we'll want to collect. And then the last is the destination right here. So if we were to look at this log file as an example, we want to log all off prif logs of all priority levels to var log secure. And looking at this, we want to log all logs of the info priority level to var log messages. Then we explicitly went through and we want to log none of the mail logs to var log messages. Same here, we can come down here. We can see, you can see we have the mail facility and we're going to log all messages for the mail facility and we're going to log those to var log mail log. So we know how to configure logging. What do we do if our log files start filling up? Well, there's a utility for that. That utility is called a log rotation. Just like our syslog D keeps track of logs, log rotation utility rotates log files out to keep them from getting too full. The best way to understand log rotation is just to take a look at the config file. So if we were to do nano, so that's etsy log rotation dot com, you'll see here we have log rotation. And as you can see, it's pretty straightforward. It tells us how often to locate files, how many weeks worth of files we should keep, what we should do when there is a new file or while creating a new file, how we should name the file, if we should compress it, and lots of other stuff here that we can configure inside of logrotate.com.